God, we trusted in Him, and He saved us. Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation. God has always had a plan for our salvation, a plan to make us truly alive in Him. God's plan wasn't like anything the world had ever seen before. It was a plan of love and pain and death and life. The story of God's plan was brand out so we completed and have life. It was the best story ever.
just a story of a baby and a manger. It is not just a story of an obedient son or just a story of healer and teacher. It is not just the story of one who died for his friends and his enemies. And it is not just the story of one who was buried in a borrowed grave. The story of Jesus is full of power because of all these stories and more. It is also the story of the Son of God who rose from the grave and who is alive. Yes, our Savior lives, Jesus is alive. Amen. Because Jesus is alive, you and I can live. God made us alive in Christ. He forgave our sins. Amen. Because of His great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Jesus himself said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Thank the Lord for this. Acts chapter 1. 
Acts chapter 1, I want to pick up where we left off this morning. It's good to be in the Lord's house today. I'm thankful, thankful for these children tonight and these adults that led them, and I praise the Lord for them, and the Lord definitely blessed their efforts, and it has been good to be in the Lord's house. I rejoice in the one that got saved this morning. I rejoice in the work of God in this place, and I'll tell you what, uh, the Bible says that uh, heaven rejoices over one sinner that repents and gets right. And I, if heaven's rejoicing, we ought to be rejoicing. And we ought to rejoice with those that come to the Lord. And I am so thankful for that young man getting saved today. Uh, there's no doubt that the Lord is working on many. And so let's continue to pray for these. Uh, I want to pick up exactly where we left off this morning. And I want to read some of the same verses that I ended with this morning in Acts chapter 1 and in verse 9. When he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven. And that's where we stop this morning. But I want to finish this verse. And this is what I want to speak to you about tonight. Shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for coming the first time. I appreciate the work that you did at Calvary. I'm so thankful for the work you did at the garden tomb. Lord, thank you for defeating death, hell, and the grave. But Lord, I'm glad that you're coming back again. And I'm glad as sure as you came the first time, you're going to come just as sure the second time. And Lord, because you fulfilled all the prophecy the first time, you will fulfill it again. You are a God of your word, and I'm glad that I serve a risen Savior who is coming back for me. Lord, I am so ready for your return. And I pray as your children tonight that you will get us more ready and get us more focused Get us paying attention to what you're doing and what's going on in this world and help us to realize every day that you could come back today. You could come back today, and I'm so thankful for that. I love you and I praise you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You see that phrase there, shall so come in like manner. Shall so come in like manner. I want you to think about tonight of all the prophecy in the Old Testament of Isaiah and Jeremiah and all of the Old Testament prophets. King David uh, said a lot about the coming Messiah. But it began in the Garden of Eden when God Himself uh, foretold of the coming Messiah. And for thousands of years it was told that a Savior would one day come. And it was foretold through the tabernacle, through the temple, through even the furniture that they were uh, to put and build inside of this, it was all to depict that one day God would send His Son Jesus to be the Savior of the world. He would send a Messiah for the Jews. And over and over and over through all of those years, there were preaching, there was prophecies, there was kings, there were priests, there were prophets that were used to foretell of the coming of Christ. That one day a Savior would come. And they preached and they preached and they preached and they preached. And the very people that they preached to rejected Jesus when He came. They missed it. The Pharisees that hated Him and rejected Him so bad, they were preaching that a Messiah was coming. And He was right in front of their face and they never seen it. All the signs were there. It was preached, it was foretold but they never seen Him as the Son of the living God. But all of that prophecy that was preached all of those thousands of years, friend, it was fulfilled. And God fulfilled every jot and tittle of it. And He said, one day I'll send my Son. And He did. And Jesus came and He walked among men. He lived a perfect life. He died upon Calvary for our sin. And praise God, He rose from the dead the, the, the third day. And there's a risen Savior that we have today. The tomb is empty. We know that He walked 40 days with His disciples after He rose again. And in that 40 days after that, He ascended back into heaven. 
And the thing that we see and what I want us to look at tonight is the very simple sign of what these angels told these men, these disciples, that is looking at Jesus leaving. Now what a great event to sit there and watch Jesus leave. But I want you to know that it ripped the heart out of these men to see their Savior go away from them. It ripped their hearts out. And I believe that the angel said this to bring comfort to those men and those people standing there watching this great event who ripped their hearts out that Jesus was leaving them again is what they thought. And he said, hey, you're going to see him again. But not only was that for them, but this is also for us so that we would know a sign that we would see things and know that Jesus is coming again. And notice what he said. They, they see him go up, and here's the angels appear. They said, two men stood by them in white apparel. He said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. This same Jesus, this same Jesus, the Jesus that you know, the Jesus that you have followed, the Jesus that you believe in, the Jesus that you preach, the Jesus you're fixing to go out and preach about to this lost and dying world, that same Jesus that you're looking at a sin in the same manner, in the same fashion, will descend back upon the face of the earth. And so that same manner, in that same fashion that you've seen Him go away, in that same manner, He will return. As certain as He has left you, His coming is just as certain. As certain as He left this earth, His return to this earth is just as certain. He left, but hey, don't worry. Hey, cheer up, because He's coming back. He's coming again. And as you see this same Jesus in this same ascension, in the same manner, in the same fashion, He will return. He will return. Jesus came. He came. And He did what was fulfilled, what was needed for us to have a Savior. And He came to be the Savior of the world. But when He comes again, He will come to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the purpose of His first coming was to bring us a Savior. But the purpose of the second coming is completely different because He will come to regain dominion over the earth. He will come to bring out and execute judgment upon the place of the earth. But also in that coming, praise God, He will receive the saved. He will receive the church. He will rapture us out. Now there's twofold here of the return of Christ. There's twofold picture here of His return. There is Him coming in the clouds, which is the rapture. And there is Him coming back to planet earth, putting His foot on the Mount of Olives. This is the second coming of Christ. Now we can argue when these events are going to take place. It don't matter. Pray that I'm right and there's a pre-tribulation, okay? Pray the rapture's there at the beginning and at the seven-year mark that Jesus is going to set foot on the Mount of Olives, okay? But the reality of it is it don't matter when He's coming. It matters that He is coming and what He's going to do when He gets here. And He's coming to regain control over planet Earth, okay? He's going to wipe this out, is what the Bible said, and He's going to rebuild it. And He will have the millennial reign. And at that point, at that moment, the millennial reign will begin. Lost people don't believe it. They, what are you talking about? Well, friend, they don't have to believe it. He's still coming again. He's still coming again. Child of God, as He came the first time, He will come the second time. As He left and descended upon the Mount of Olives, He will ascend back, or excuse me, descend back on the Mount of Olives. Because the Bible said when He comes back and He puts His feet on the earth, He's coming back to the Mount of Olives and He's going to split it wide open. There's going to be an earthquake that day. Friend, Jesus is coming again. In like manner, He's coming again. As you've seen Him, this same Jesus that you know, He's coming back. i got good news. This same Jesus that I preach about, He's coming again. 
This same Jesus that we've told this lost world about, He's coming again. This same Jesus that these children got up here and sang about, He's coming again. That same Jesus that we've heard about in Sunday school and children's church and preaching, bless God, He's coming again. This same Jesus that we sing about, this same Jesus that we glorify, this same Jesus that we worship, this same Jesus that we pray to, He is coming again. The one that you know and the one that you love and the one that you adore, He's coming back for you. He's coming back for you. He's coming back for you. That same Jesus that you're in love with, bless God, you'll see Him one day. You'll see Him one day. Now think about this return. Think about what they've seen, and in that same manner, He will return. It was, number one, a bodily return. They seen Him ascend up into heaven bodily. There is no body of Jesus on this earth. Miss Francis, you've been to the garden tomb. His body's not there. There's not any bones there. When He went to heaven, it was a bodily return. He went bodily. They seen with His eyes, with their eyes. Man, if the body of Jesus was here, could you imagine how they would worship that body? Oh, that's not what it's about, is it? When Jesus went to heaven, He went bodily to heaven. And He said in the same manner, the angel said, He, he will return in like manner. He went bodily, He will return bodily. We will see Him. We will see Him for who He is. In Revelation chapter 1, John begins to talk about seeing the glorified Christ. And he begins to describe Him. He begins to describe the attributes of seeing Jesus. He said, i seen Him. He begins to describe His hair, and His eyes, and His mouth, and His feet. He described the, the garments that He had on. He described everything about Him. That means that He got to see the bodily person of Jesus in His glorified state. As these men watched the, the bodily person of Jesus go into heaven, that same return, He's coming back bodily. And we will all see Him for who He is. And I want you to know that the Bible says that when we see Him, not only will we see Him, but everybody will see Him. Because not only is it a bodily return, it is a visible return. Notice in Revelation chapter 1. Turn with me there. If you're with me, say Amen. amen. Revelation chapter 1. And I want you to notice this. <clears throat> this is the rapture here. Revelation 1 and verse 7. Behold, He cometh with clouds. That's what I was talking about, Him coming in the clouds. And every eye shall see Him, and they also which pierced Him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of Him. Even so... Amen. It was a bodily return and it's going to be a visible return. They, those men saw with their eyes Jesus leaving the earth. What a great event. What a great event to see Jesus on the face of the earth to, to take off and go into heaven. In like manner, He's returning. That means when He returns, we're going to get to see it. We're going to get to see it visibly. In fact, the Bible said all the earth is going to see it. Every eye that is open will see the bodily return of Jesus Christ. It will be visible for all men to see. Listen to me. All of those people that said He's not real, they will see Him one day. All of those religions and all of those groups that have downed Him and degraded Him, they will see how powerful He is. They will see how real He is. They will see that He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And they will realize there is nobody higher in the world than Jesus Christ Himself. As those men watched Him leave and go into heaven, bless God, the whole earth is going to get to see Him, come back to the earth, and every eye will be upon Jesus. What a great event. That is bigger than the Super Bowl. 
how many hundred million people watching the Super Bowl? Super Bowl ain't got nothing on the return of Christ. Every eye, no matter if you're in Timbuktu or in Hamburg, Arkansas, you're going to see Jesus come again. It will get everybody's attention. It will get everybody's acknowledgement. All eyes will be on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. As those men were just gazing into heaven and all of their attention was on that great event, friend, when He returns, every eye will be on the great event when Jesus splits that eastern sky wide open. Let me tell you something. Facebook can't handle what's, what's coming. Facebook can't handle, CNN can't handle what's coming. They can't fully cover what's coming because, friend, they won't need to because every eye will behold this great event that will one day take place. Oh, what a day that's going to be. What a day that's going to be. There'll be two in the field. There'll be two of the grinding stone. And bless God, we'll be going about our daily business. But on that day, a great event will take place. And Jesus will return. Oh man, every eye will see Him. Oh, I can't wait to see Jesus. I can't wait to see Jesus. And I, I don't want to be mean and I don't want to rub it because I don't want anybody to die and go to hell. But all of those people that have spent all of their life trying to disprove Jesus, they're going to eat their hearts out. <laughs> and I hate it. But they're going to have to look on Him. And they're going to have to see Him. And you know what they're going to say? I was wrong. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. Jesus is the King of kings. All powers will bow down before Him, both great and both small. They'll all fall down before Him when they get to see Jesus. Hey, I'm ready for the streets of gold. Hey, excuse me, the street of gold. Hey, I'm ready for that city. Man, I can't wait. But man, I'm ready to see the One who died for me. I'm ready to fall down on the One that... the only One that ever gave His life for me. Oh, I'm ready to fall down before Him and say, Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord, for what You've done. Thank You, Lord, for loving me. It will be a heavenly return in Acts 7. Look in Acts 7, and I'm going to be done. Now I want you to think about this. This great event that Jesus ascended into heaven, this was a glorified event. Heaven was open. Jesus went to heaven. These men got to see a glorified event. Yes, it was spectacular. Yes, it was awesome. But was so, what was so good about this is that in the ascension of Christ, that heaven was opened up to receive Jesus. Now, let me tell you something. When Jesus comes back, heaven will be opened up. And it will be a great glorified event. It will be a heavenly event. It will be a heavenly return. I want you to know He may have came this last time in the robes of humanity, but next time He will come dressed in the robes of glory. And I want you to know that everything about Him and everything about His return will be glorified. It will be beyond our imagination. I can't even begin to clearly explain to you how heavenly this event is going to be. Notice in Acts, Acts chapter 7. Man, if this event don't get you fired up, you may need to get saved tonight. I'm telling you. Man, what a day this is going to be when Jesus returns and comes back for us. Notice Acts. We know Stephen, the deacon here, full of the Holy Ghost. He's out preaching. He's out serving the Lord and he's crucified for it. He's persecuted for it. Notice verse 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed on Him with their teeth. But notice this, but He, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open." and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. We don't have to wonder where He's at tonight, do we? The Word tells us clearly where He's at. He's at the right hand of the throne of God. Through the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Stephen got to see it. All heaven was opened up for him. I believe that day that Jesus returns, 
I may be dead and gone by that time and I may be already in heaven. But I'll be honest, I want to be here when He comes back. I want to be here. I want to be here in that glorified event. Because all of heaven is going to open up. And our eyes have never seen what we're going to see in this glorified day. And I want you to know that it's going to be the greatest event that has ever taken place upon the face of the earth. And it will involve all of those who believe. And it will involve all of those who do not believe. Everybody will be included in this return. Some on the good and some on the bad. But friend, that day heaven will be opened up. Notice what he said in verse 55. And he saw the glory of God. Brother Chuck, I'm so ready to see the glory of God. I am so ready to see and be a part of a glorified place. I'll be honest with you, I get sick of this old world. I get so sick of the sin. I get so sick of the filth. I get so sick of the backward way. I get so sick of right being wrong and wrong being right. I'll be honest, I'm sick of cancer. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of death. I'm sick of it. But that day that Jesus comes back, we're going to get to see the glory of God. Glory land. A land filled with God's glory. I can't comprehend it. You know why? Because we're in sin land. We live in a land that has the curse of sin upon it. I get to go to a land of glory. No backaches in heaven. No migraines in heaven. <laughs> Isn't it going to be good, Miss Francis? You won't need that walker in heaven. You won't need it in heaven. You won't need hearing aids in heaven. Because it's glorified. It's glorified. It's glorified. You won't need all of that stuff when we get to heaven. We won't need pills anymore. We won't need doctors. We won't need hospitals. All of that stuff is gone away. And there will be the Lord in, the, in our glorified states. And we will see the glory of God. Glory land. Land slap full of God's glory. Isn't that awesome? How long? For a place that I've never been before. Isn't that amazing? That there's something in us that we want to go somewhere so bad that we ain't never even seen before. Because there's a longing in your heart, child of God, for something better. The Bible said Abraham looked for a city and a place. The builder and maker was God. They look for a heavenly place, a better place. He's coming again. Hold on, child of God. He's coming again. We get to shout today. Man, service was awesome this morning, wasn't it? Why were we shouting? Why were we so excited? Because we serve a risen Savior. But you wait till that day that He splits the eastern sky wide open. And all of the world will get to see the Son of God. There's going to be a lot of weeping and wailing but not for the redeemed. We're going to get to sing, and we're going to get to shout, and we're going to get to praise Him. I say it all the time, and people say, well, preacher, I just, you know, I just don't like getting excited. Well, don't go to heaven. Okay? Because I'm telling you what, you won't talk about excitement. When we get to see that glorified God, you know what I'm waiting for? That I get to fellowship with Him without the telephone ringing. And I get to worship Him without any distractions. And I get to get in His wisdom and in His knowledge without any other thought. Man, I'm so ADD. Man, I can be praying to the Lord and hunting deer the very next second. Because my mind is everywhere. But not when I get to heaven. To be focused on Him. And that like manner, He's coming again. He's coming again. Child of God, get ready because He's coming again. He's coming again. Hold on, because He's coming again. Preach. Tell the lost about Him, because He's coming again. He's coming again. Let's all stand. <clears throat>
Let's have an invitation tonight. These altars are open. If you need to come to these altars, you sat here and you've heard this message and you say, Preacher, I've heard this and I'm not ready for Him to come back. I need to be saved. Would you walk this aisle right now? Let me show you how to be saved. Get ready because He's coming. He's coming. There'll be two in the field. There'll be two at the grinding stone. One will be taken. One will be left. Do not be left. Don't be left. Be saved tonight. These altars are open. Fall on your face before Him and just say, Lord, thank You. And I love one of the last things He said. He talked about Him coming. He said, I'm coming. But I love John's response. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Is that your plea tonight? Even so come, Lord Jesus. We'll pay